and the UN Security Council is holding an emergency meeting today to discuss the situation. Bob Ray is the Canadian ambassador to the United Nations and he joins us live now with more on this. Uh, Bob, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. It's a tough situation. With this emergency meeting, walk us through what we might expect to come out of it. Uh, well, quite frankly, I don't think a lot will come out of it in the sense that I don't think there'll be much agreement uh, among the council members because everybody has to remember uh, you've got uh, you've got Russia and China uh, and some other countries there. Russia, well, they have vetoes on any kind of a resolution. There won't be a resolution. But I think it's still important to have the meeting because it will give um, all the members an opportunity to hear out the, uh, the, the both sides and also to clearly express their own views as to how to go forward. Um, uh, the, the challenge everybody, I think, understands is we've never seen uh, as, as deep and traumatic an attack um, deep into the heart of Israel and Israeli communities affecting Israeli families as, as this, this particular uh, attack. And that trauma will obviously affect Israel's response. Uh, it will also, uh, I think, um, clearly g give rise to a lot of questions about how could this have happened. Uh, but I think the main thing is for us to understand that Israel is going to respond. And I think what we need to keep our eye on is making sure that in that response, we don't lose sight of uh, the possibilities of, uh, of, 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 of peace. It's it, when you when a conflict like this starts, the first question for for those of us in, in in diplomacy is, how does this come to an end with the possibility of a more lasting solution? Uh, the lasting solution of two states living side by side with each other has been lost for a considerable period of time, and it's this doesn't make it this makes it much harder and makes it much worse. But right now, I think we're dealing with a with a very violent conflict particularly concerned about the hostages, how we deal with the hostage situation. Uh, and, and that's a terrible crime of war that the, the Hamas has carried out uh, to, to take people hostage and kidnap them in the, in the middle of this war is, is, not, is not an easy thing to do. Uh, but um, we, we will all be watching and listening carefully to what, what is being said. Well, this conflict has been going on for many years now, and this idea of a two-state solution isn't a new one. A lot of the temporary members on the UN Security Council seem to be in favor of a two-state solution, but it seems to be the permanent members that are divided. You mentioned China and Russia. They seem to be taking a more neutral stance, but France, the U.S., the U.K. seem to be very much standing behind Israel. So, in your opinion, how long does it take to talk about the two-state solution, or what would it take to move away from talking about it and to actually push that forward? Well, Eden, uh, actually, every country in the, at the, on the Security Council agrees with a two-state solution. The United States endorses it, France endorses it, Britain endorses it. I don't know why you would say that, that they don't endorse it. Um, the my challenge has been— the challenge. Has, there. Sorry? No, it's fine. The it's challenge has been on both sides that— um, a, a, a terrorist group like Hamas, Hezbollah, they do not accept a two-state solution. Um, President Abbas has indicated that he does support a two-state solution, but he's, he's badly weakened in his power situation. Um, but the challenge has been in recent years that Israel has, has not taken a, an, any initiatives that would lead to, to two states, um, and that has been a challenge for everybody. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is, is that even though it's getting to a two-state solution has been frustrating, no f level of frustration justifies what happened yesterday. That, I think, has got to be a key point. This, this has to be understood, that to attack c civilians in this way um, is, not a, I I is simply not something that the world can tolerate, that Israel could possibly say, oh, well, now let's get back to the bargaining table because the motivation behind the terrorism is the destruction of the state of Israel, and no state is going to lie back and, and let somebody destroy their state. And that's, that has been the nature of the challenge that, that we face right now. We are in the middle of a war, and we have to think about what, is, what will the end of the war look like, but we all have to appreciate that the, that the war is going to be very, very difficult, 
and is a lot of lives can be lost unless unless we see some powerful response from countries saying no we want to bring the war quickly to an end um, and we want to recognize two states but that does not appear to be at the moment the, the, what is what is driving the conflict at this present time uh, let's talk a little bit about Canada's role in this. We lost our bid for a seat on the Security Council. What can we expect Canada to do in their response to this situation beyond condemning the attacks? Well, I, I know the words Canada does not have a seat appeared under my, <laughs> under my face for, for quite a long time. Look, we, if we had a seat, we'd be there for two years. So see, it's still there. Canada, <laughs> And so I, you're obviously trying to make a point. But the fact that we're not on the Security Council uh, is, a, is a temporary thing. We didn't get there four years ago. We, we would have been off by now anyway. Uh, the Security Council is not, not the only place where these issues are going to be debated. These issues will be discussed in, on the, in the General Assembly. These issues will be discussed very much between the parties. Obviously, I'll be meeting with all of the, uh, the people that I can here in New York uh, to try to emphasize the, 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 the attachment that we have as a country to finding a peaceful solution and to this very profound meaning of two states. It's not just two states. It's mutual recognition. It's recognizing the right of the other people to live. It's recognizing the, the, the humanity that is shared between everyone. Um, people wouldn't be committing the atrocities they committed yesterday if they really believed that the Israelis are human beings. And we all have to understand that that's, that's what is the greatest barrier to peace. The greatest barrier to peace is refusing to accept the dignity and the humanity of the other. Israel is suffering terribly at the moment because of this trauma, and all of our hearts go out to them at the moment because of what has taken place. All right. That's Bob Ray, Canadian Ambassador to the United Nations. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Nice to see you.